Uh, so our talk today is the last SDR, how to use AI and automate your B2B cold outbound motion. And so Eric and I believe that AI has the potential to completely replace most of your SDRs and to be creative at scale, but it's not in the way that you think. So a little background of uh, Eric and I, we send, our agencies send hundreds of thousands of emails uh, every month. We do millions in pipe, uh, zero SDRs, and we don't use Zoom info. And so uh, the goal here is for Eric and I to show you what would it be like if instead of hiring us, you used AI? Uh, how would you build that system? Uh, what would you do? So I asked Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI uh, via ChatGPT, to try to replace me in the systems that uh, we use. And Eric will be representing the human in this, uh, in this talk. Eric, are you, uh, are you ready to compete against uh, GPT-4? Yes, ready to go. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, and you'll see these highlights here when uh, we have questions. So uh, Steve will be facilitating some of those questions uh, um, as we go through. So uh, it's really important to understand how we got here, right? How, how companies start and how their sales motion begins. And so usually it starts with the founder and wow, they sell their product, their friends love it, right? And then their friends refer other friends, right? Like, wow, my friends love it too, this is amazing. Um, and you raise money because money was cheap and you had traction, right? These are people using your product. I'm gonna raise a bunch of money. And so you hired a Chad or a Mike uh, <laughs> to sell full time for you. And he's like, great, like they're gonna sell like mad. And Chad's like, great, I can just, I can, you know, I'll hit the ground running and I'll go sell. Um, and it's sort of six months in and, uh, you know, Skip doesn't really know, you know, he hasn't really gotten many deals. He's been trying, you know. Um, uh, and so you now, but you still have to grow. So, and inbound's not gonna get you there. So what do you do? So should I do marketing? Like, was it Chad's fault? What about PLG? Like, is it a product problem? Um, or for folks that are, have a more uh, advanced motion, you pay your SDRs. And People Data Labs did a really great presentation on this where they showed that when Zoom Info, Clearbit scaled, they just threw bodies at the problem. They just threw a bunch of reps, right? And so this is kind of the feeling of the rep here. It's like, they got a research account. They got to write good emails. Like, it's GPT-5, the thing that's going to kill me. They got to update the CPM, the quarter closes, and they're just kind of all over the place. Um, and it gets even worse because AI is sticking its butt in your business. It's like, great, every part of your process is going to be replaced with AI. We don't quite know how yet. And so this talk is really to answer some of these questions. Hey, guys. Hey, Steve, how goes it? So good. It's been so long, Jordan. <laughs> it's been so long. I should have taken that Mandalorian helmet. Uh, I thought it would be pretty funny if I just left with it, but I thought you might not invite me back. Uh, I would definitely invite you back. Uh, <laughs> because uh, I'd want to win it back in, in, in combat. But uh, <laughs> I apologize. I was having a little bit of a, a technical getting on here, and I, I want to get into this, but just introduction to these guys. So um, listen, as part of my team, what we did is, is we reached out to, to people who had attended these events before, people who had uh, um, registered for this event. We said, hey, listen, we've got some great speakers coming, but tell us what topics or technology are you interested in hearing, in, hearing about? Without a doubt, the number one thing that came back was AI. And as we dug into that and said, okay, what do you mean with AI? Um, I think the people have been using, you know, chat GPT. Um, I did a session with David Delaney in the last block where we talked about uh, some tools that you can use that are really cool and out there. Um, but I, I think a lot of people suffer from the same place that I suffered with before I started talking to these guys, which is great. I can get onto chat GPT and I can say, hey, write me an email and it's going to be the same credit email that everybody else that goes in chat GPT says, write me an email. I can even say, hey, do it in the voice of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, uh, Jack Sparrow from, from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean um, and it'll do it. Um, but there is so much more to these, these AI tools, especially, the, you know, this from the advent of GPT-4 than what we're doing. But I think that there's a fear from folks like me, us mere mortals, uh, of how do we get into this and how do we how do we act on it? And so I reached out to LinkedIn uh, and I said, hey, who knows who should I be talking to? And I literally these guys like everybody's like Eric and Jordan, Eric and Jordan, Eric and Jordan. So we connected. Um, we actually connected so well that Jordan was driving uh, across the country. And, and we were texting, kind of prepping for this. He's like, yeah, I'm going to be driving through Salt Lake. And I'm like, um, you're going to be a mile from my house. You need a place to crash. And so he crashed <laughs> my house on his way over. So, uh, and we, we spent, we were up way too late talking yeah, shop. Sure. So, but uh, if you saw Jordan's recent post and go onto his LinkedIn and check it out, 
Uh, that was my house, and it was a Mandalorian helmet that uh, I had <laughs> that, that he put on there. But I do want to say this before we get going. One of the things that we want to do here is we want to have conversations. So uh, go ahead and, and make comments. Um, I'm watching them on Twitter. I'm watching them on YouTube. Uh, I'm watching them on LinkedIn. Uh, go ahead and make comments and just add hashtag DGS2023. Uh, and I will monitor that hashtag if you've got questions for these guys. Because these guys... Uh, these guys are titans and uh, pioneers of this whole AI AI space. So there, I've, well, I've done my uh, thing. So. Uh, uh, thanks so much for the interest, Stephen. Um, the chicken was great. So yeah, yeah, I uh, I was like, oh, you know what? How can I get a free place to stay? Maybe I should give a converse a talk at this. It was a long, <laughs> it was a a, a, a long winded way to do this. Um, uh, yeah, so it, uh, Steve's point is really uh, key here. We really want to uh, we want you to gauge, we want you to ask questions about what we're doing. Um, not many companies have figured out what Eric and I have uh, figured out, and they're not doing it in the way we are um, because we're not encumbered by any of of our past decisions because we're uh, nimble founders. And so the purpose of this talk is really how do we fire ourselves? And so um, and Eric and I've been doing this for a while, and so it's time to like think about what would we do if Jordan had to fire Jordan how would he do it um so let's get back into the uh, bold talk. question yeah yeah well um it, it it's like actually was kind of sad how how g good uh gbt4 was at firing me um all right um uh, so this is the scalable framework. This is kind of the only framework that you need. Um, I'm going to use some jargon because it wouldn't be a talk without jargon. Uh, so total addressable market, TAM. SAM is the service addressable market. So the TAM is what you sell to your VCs and the SAM is what your customers buy. They're different. Um, and the ICP, of course, is ideal customer profile. So this is sort of what the, at a high level, what the framework looks like. In section one, they're set up. So uh, this is email warming. Uh, Eric's going to uh, give some really great talk about this next. Then it's TAM scoring, total addressable market scoring. And this is more about elimination. So this is not getting your perfect companies. This is finding who are the companies that you definitely don't want to sell to and pulling all of the company domains, URLs, information. This is basic stuff that you guys uh, know today, but there's a layer that's much more interesting when you go from TAM to SAM. And then section two, we're going to talk about scalable campaign testing because in sales, there's a lot to go wrong. Did you get the person right? Did you get the timing right? Is your messaging bad? Is your messaging bad? Is your messaging bad? We always can improve messaging. And so uh, AI is going to help you with the email warming, which Eric will talk about. It's going to help you with TAM scoring criteria. It's also going to help you not only with ideas, but execution as well. Um, and within sort of the subset of this TAM scoring, is defining your service addressable market. AI is going to tell you how to do that. It's also going to give you ideas about how to score that ICP from sort of an A plus to an F. Um, so these are kind of the uh, six sections of our talk. I learned a lesson from uh, Guy Kawasaki that said, if you're going to suck, at least tell people how long you will suck for so that they know when it will be over. So this is my attempt at doing that here. Two sections. There's a setup section. We're going to talk about warming. Um, ideas. You will have access to my whole ChatGPT conversation here, so you can steal this. So get your phones ready and you can point at the screen. Um, you'll, see, you'll see that a couple of times, uh, so you can steal everything I've uh, done here. Uh, how to score accounts to go from TAM to SAM. Uh, where to find data. AI will help with that. And then section two, we're going to talk about campaigns. This is action, right? This is uh, where William Jake were like, I don't think AI is going to replace our sellers. I believe that once you're on the phone, of course, uh, ChatGPT is not going to be having a conversation with your customers anytime soon. But everything before that can be done with AI. And can, so can we're going to talk. Yeah, please, one, please. One thing, one, one thing I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. Like, so I, I'm a Detroit kid, right? Growing up in Detroit in the 80s, the big question was like, hmm. they were changing the factories out. I remember this. They were changing out to go from automated guys turning a wrench to robots. Yeah. And everybody was convinced, hey, they were going to sell. They were, gonna, they were going to replace people. Um, and it didn't happen. I mean, it did a little yeah. bit, yeah. but it didn't happen. What happened was people's jobs could get more specific. The quality yes, could get yes, better. Yes. The, so it, it's, it's not that it's going to uh, replace your job. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I, I think what's going to happen, in my opinion, I think what's going to happen is you are going to get more specific. You're going to you're, there's going to be less of this auto, you know, less of the stuff that you have to do. That's quote unquote busy work. Yep. And you'll be able to kind of get going faster. 
That's exactly right. And, and, and thanks for helping clarify here. What I meant is that uh, AI is, I think, going to replace all of the top of funnel stuff that SDR spend most of their time on today. Um, and that is like account research, um, writing like personalized messages. I don't think that's going to that's gonna happen because frankly, AI can do a better job if you deploy it in this system. Um, a sales rep still have to have a conversation with someone. People do want to buy from people. And so mm -hmm. I think this is just going to, you know, the I believe in the adage that um, AI won't replace your job. Someone that uses AI will replace you if you don't find a way to use AI. So that's my thought. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Uh, I'm going to introduce a concept called creative constraint with context. This makes all the difference in how you use AI here. And this is when you see those, uh, it's like, oh, ChatGPT can write a message for you. It's like, write a message to the VP of sales. Like, that's no context. Uh, it's very, very creative, but there's no constraint. Um, and then we're going to have some examples, and you're going to talk with the humans. Um, uh, so uh, I wanted to give a pause here. Um, and uh, and talk about uh, I want to hear kind of how people are deploying AI today. This is a great um, uh, uh, Garfield without Garfield, which is a wonderful cartoon where they remove Garfield not, from the. I don't. I don't think you're. Yeah, you're, you're not sharing. sharing. Oh, share your uh, screen, Jordan. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, yeah. Well, AI didn't really help me out there. Let's. <laughs> okay. Is that is it happening again? There we go. Garfield great. without Garfield. Yeah. So um, I feel like there's a lot of talk on uh, LinkedIn about ChatGPT, but most people really aren't using it. So I'm kind of curious. Um, I want to pause here and, uh, and maybe ask some of the, uh, the revenue leaders uh, on the call uh, how, how you guys are thinking about AI. How are you, you using know, it today? I, while we're waiting for some of that to come in, um, uh, one of the things I loved was on the keynote speech, Goddard, uh, Abel from uh, G2, he gave his favorite ChatGPT prompt, which is, I don't know if you saw that, but he said, put your email in and then make it uh, and give the prompt, write this 50% uh, with 50% less words and 200% more punchy. Yeah. And I did it uh, like live while we, were, while we were sitting there. And, and if, if you uh, take an email that you've been writing, throw it in the chat GPT, again, context, and then give it that, that prompt and see what comes back. It's actually been really, really, I mean, it was, it was, I was like, wow, that's a lot better. Yes. You know, I, why didn't I write that to begin with? Duh. <laughs> so. Yes. Uh, and it's funny that you mentioned that because I was listening to the B2B Power Hour and Bilal was on there and he was saying, look, there's a sentence that you can write that says, we help save Verizon a million bucks. Um, okay, great. That's a great proof point. Um, but what if you said, uh, we help prevent Verizon from losing $1,000 so that they could provide bonuses uh, for, their, uh, uh, for their employees to buy Christmas presents for their kids, right? Same message, um, but but way more provocative of a message. Um, and this is like this sort of going 10% better, 20% better. Um, GPT-4 specifically is excellent at this. We did have one comment that came in that I, I want to I wanna highlight because um, yeah. I think it goes to kind of the point. It, it's from, and I apologize, I'm going to butcher your name. I'm just going to say that at first and foremost. AI wouldn't, but I am. Uh, Oxy uh, Zialante, Zialante said, because of the velocity of outreach, clients will appreciate the real person conversation even more. And I think that um, what that means is, um, and, and I'm curious for your take on it, but yeah. we can automate a lot of these processes. So in the, in the example of the factory, what, mean, what happens is we're going to push more cars out. Uh, we're going to push them out faster. Um, we're going to have more conversations. As we've been using AI, one of the great things is it's not that I'm replacing salespeople. I'm hiring salespeople right yeah. now. Like I'm, I'm looking for salespeople, but what we're able to do is handle more deals. And where in days yeah. past, when you're just on a dialer making, you know, hundred calls in a day, talking to three people in a day when we're prospecting, we're having three, four conversations an hour now uh, yeah. with, with, with the, with the added use of, of, of a tech stack. Yeah. So, and, um, yes, I am um, horrible with names. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> One, um, one thing I'll say about that is that the purpose of this presentation is really to address that concern because the way that, and, and Eric, I'm going to have you chime in here and uh, talk about how you think about this, but um, the way that you see AI used in most of, uh, uh, in most of the SDR workflows is like a personalized first line, right? Um, or uh, it's like write the entire email and that, you read that and it feels like AI. And it's like it, it does a ninth grader's job uh, on, you know, it's, it's you, you, your dog ate your homework. And of course, no one's going to respond to that. Um, uh, we have a different hypothesis here about how you can inject 
creativity that even an SDR would have a really hard time doing. Um, and even me as a founder has a hard time doing this, but AI is excellent at it. So you'll see that framework a little bit. Um, Eric, I'm curious to get your take here. Um, uh, respond to that comment. Yeah, um, I think uh, one, just tipping off from, you're right, like if it's just the, the personalized first line right at the top, then you know they could smell that from, from a mile away. Um, I think, and we're going to get into this more for the rest of the presentation, when you are using AI to infer problems that this company is having, and then then take that inference and then write a message based off that inference and then inject it into the email. Um, even if somebody can tell that that was written by AI, who cares? Because now at least you're messaging to a problem and how you can solve that problem. And I don't care if there's a robot on the end of that email, as long, like if somebody were to email my agency right now, uh, potentially about like how to find, you know, a good customer success role, I might be putting this out here and I might get, you know, uh, a ton of messages. <laughs> but if somebody was like, hey, you know, like I, I saw your company, you've hired like four people, but none of them include customer success. Uh, I was just thinking about like, are you still doing it? Like, how, how is this all happening? I even if it said on there, like AI wrote this message and if you respond a human will pick it up, I don't care. Like that, it just matches the problem mm -hmm. that we have so much right now that yeah. you know, it, 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 it is not a problem to me or I think buyers and buyers when I ask them if they even care um, that this was written by AI, none of them would. It's just, yeah. it's all about are you connecting the problem with the solution? Yep. We did, we did get a couple comments here. Uh, um, Chris Johnson said, I'm mostly using AI for content strategy. I use the free SEM rush content builder, then cross-reference that with GPT-4 to create blog outlines for my internal writers. So far, we've been crushing SEO and got in 20 plus of our pages to uh, rank number one. Yeah, uh, I, I think this was one of the, probably the first great use cases for AI was just like churning out a ton, a ton more content. Um, and now it's like, how do you build the system, which we're going to talk about? How do you build this system yeah. to now like point this at like an, an email strategy um, as well. Yeah, and with that, Eric, why don't you, let's talk about um, email setup and warming, uh, the first piece of the setup. Yeah, so the reason why we start with this is because you can, I, I kind of use like a supplement example is you could take a ton of supplements, you could take, you know, your protein powders and your creatines and, and all of these things. But if your body isn't ready to actually ingest all of those vitamins that you're giving it, then it's just a waste of time. And honestly, you're just going, it's just going to leave your body without benefiting you as well. If you take all the time to invest in this system and get it up and running and, and all of these things, and then go out to the market and get a 7% open rate, nothing is going to matter if you can't get your uh, emails past the spam filters. And now spam filters are so bad that Google is landing in spam for themselves. Um, and so, <laughs> Steve. Really? I, yeah. I, I, do we all see the presentation still? I just see Steve. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, hold on. Someone. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll just keep talking go. through it. I'm on it. I'm yeah, on it. Perfect. Like a fat kid on a Twinkie. I can make that joke. You guys can't make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> and so when it comes to these spam filters, Google, I, I literally, I could show you, I have an email of Google sending me a DMARC notification that landed in my spam filter. <laughs> and so these spam filters, I, and because people will say all the time to me, oh, if your emails were actually good, you would get past the spam filters. You only need to hack the spam filters because you suck. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. But anyway, like that's We're just good. not true. These spam filters have just gone way too far um, at blocking things. And now that Google's even having these problems. So whenever you're thinking about, well, how do I set up a campaign that's going to get past the spam filters? I like to think about it as, you know, first think about what spammers do. They buy domains and they start sending emails immediately. There's no warm up in their inboxes, which is probably the last thing that I'm going to be speaking about. Sometimes they'll buy what are called dedicated uh, SMTPs, which is uh, sending mail transfer protocol. Um, and these things are capable of sending like a million emails per day. And they'll use these and then they'll get banned after like 200 emails because the Google and Outlook and Yahoo, all of the world, they know what they're doing. And then they use a ton of spam words like free or once in a lifetime um, or Jesus. Um, Jesus and Oprah are actually spam words, so you can't say either of those. Um, and Bitcoin is Poor a huge Oprah. spam word as well. Yeah, How yeah, do you think Oprah, Oprah feels about that? I mean, yeah, it's just I, like... I think she gets it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and so uh, you can't say Bitcoin either. One time we were sending emails of like the event was at the Bitcoin safe house was what like the, the place was called. And it had nothing to do with Bitcoin, but it still got flagged for spam and, and all of these things. So these are some things that you need to, to be watching out for. 
Another thing that spammers do is they send a lot of messages all in one time. And so like we say here, you know, Salesloft says you can send 250 emails per day uh, per inbox in 2023. That's about an e one email every two minutes. You can't actually do that as a human whatsoever. And there's no way, and Google knows this. And so when they see you sending out all of these emails, they, it's very, very obvious to them that you are, are sending out um, just the same content over and over and over again. And so what we set up, and so I run uh, Jordan's email infrastructure for, for his clients as well. What we both have set up across both of our, our agencies is a multi-domain and multi-inbox approach where essentially we work backwards from the problem and we say, okay, if we have to send 500 emails a day, the best practice is we send 50 emails per inbox. And then there's two inboxes on each domain, which I can get into. And so when we send 50 emails per day, that's about 13 minutes, uh, plus or minus two minutes, because we're using AI to send all these things. Um, and that way, when we're sending these emails, it's like, oh, okay, you know, they like wrote an email, and then maybe they took a break, and then they wrote another email, and it just looks far more natural. So again, always thinking about, okay, what do spammers do? And how do I not be a spammer? Spammers also send a lot of links. They send a lot of images. They, they do a lot of these things that they're not sending plain text emails, those kinds of things. We're always wanting to do what the, the opposite of the, the spammers are doing. What's interesting with that too is, is it's interesting that there have been tools in the past that are quote unquote robots that essentially they can do that, but it, it's, it has to, in order to do what you're able to do now, it has to take over your your computer and it actually takes over the mouse control and it, it <laughs> clicks everything individually. I've, I've seen them out there. Wow. That's um, crazy. And it's just, it's like, then you got to turn over your com computer over to it. And, and honestly, I've used it before just to see what it would do. I felt a little dirty using it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. 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 And so actually, I think, uh, to be quite honest, uh, I am prepared, Jordan might not even know this, but uh, I'm prepared to move both of our agencies over to that system if need be. Because we are sending emails through the SMTP and then we're receiving emails from the IMAP, which is just a bunch of words that if you just use tools <laughs> that I'm going to outline below, it's going to be totally fine for you. Um, and so one day I think Google might start pinging you and say, hey, you know, I know that this email was, was automatically sent out. Doesn't matter that it's totally like different content than the last email that was sent out. I'm still going to ding you on deliverability. Um, and we are prepared to move to a system that would like sit inside of a browser window and just like mm -hmm. move things around as if somebody mm -hmm. sat on the other side of this. All of these things that I'm saying, basically, if you go to smartly.ai, instantly.ai, or upticks.io, if you go to any of these, um, they, all this whole system that I'm talking about, they will help you set up the system for a, you know, extremely good ROI. Like I think all of their plans are like the top one is like a hundred dollars a month before you get into enterprise <laughs> um, seats. And um, they'll allow you to have as many inboxes as you want. So you don't have to pay per inbox like you do on Apollo or sales loft or outreach or any of these things mm -hmm. when you pay for, for each user. Um, the kind of like the last thing that we're seeing as well is we're starting to see some, some increases when we email from a Google to a Google inbox and an outlook to an in outlook inbox. And so um, we're getting prepared for that system. We'll be done with that system in probably three days. That'll be set up. And so out, out, if you are a company that targets uh, enterprise companies, all of them are using Outlook. And if you're a company that's targeting SMB, I would even say mid-market is still probably using Outlook as well. If you are using, um, or if you're targeting SMB companies, they're probably using Google. And so if you need to just pick one, like that's how you would kind of make that decision. Um, and then just the 101 basics, people post about this stuff all the time on LinkedIn now, like email deliverability has gotten super interesting, but no matter how much people post about it, I feel like they still don't get it. You need to set up your DKM sig signatures and your DMARC. Um, use companies like MailTester or MailGenius to test these setups. Um, and all these things are incredibly easy. You just need to know that you need to do it. Like all, I, all, I had a call with a company last week that... Uh, didn't oh, like have a DMARC verified and they had like a 20% open rate and then they put on a DMARC and then they got like a 55% open rate. And it's just, it's just awareness. Like people are like, Oh, do I need to get an engineer on this? Like, no, like, they, <laughs> like it's fine. Like you, you literally just copy and paste things. People just don't know um, what to do. And now this is how AI is helping us do this is when we warm up these emails, like I talked about in the beginning, essentially we set up all these emails and then we let them run for about three weeks, four weeks is best where basically they join a pool of other people who say, hey, you could send me emails and I'm not going to mark you as spam and I'm going to send you emails and don't mark me as spam. And so then we're kind of tricking Google into thinking, oh, okay, you know, they, they send emails and they get responses. Like nobody's marking them as spam. They must be, you know, a high reputation sender. And so going from like a 
cold domain to a warmed up domain, that's the process of how that happens. And it's using AI generated messages that looks like sales emails, but they're different every time to kind of just yeah. like warm up Google to say like, oh, it's totally fine if they say, can I send you a PDF? Because they sent it in the past and that person didn't mark them as spam. So this is probably legit going forward. And um, yeah, again, all these tools that I laid out that make all this easy for you. Again, a lot of this email deliverability stuff is, is pretty easy if you just need to set up like five inboxes when we scale like like Jordan and I do for our customers, um, it gets a little bit more trickier. But uh, if you just need like five inboxes and you're sending like 200 emails a day, this is not difficult. It's just people just need the awareness that they need to be doing this. Yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, I'm kind of curious, uh, are people, what are people doing now? Like, are, are you setting on subdomains? Are you setting on a main domain? Are you taking sales lofts advice and setting 250 emails a day per inbox? Um, what are folks doing um, for cold email today? I've, I've, while we're waiting a couple for a couple things to come in, I've uh, worked at companies who have kind of run the gamut. I had one that, uh, you know, they sent out so many emails, so many things were warmed up that uh, wasn't a huge issue. Um, over there, um, I mean, we were getting, um, you know, th like 3,500 MQLs to my team a month. Wow! wow. So they had they had this ramped up to 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 a uh, a, a big level. I, I think a lot of people just haven't known the logistics of yeah. what you just described because yep. it sounds you start throwing those acronyms around, it starts looking um, <laughs> yeah, intimidating. Words. Yeah, yeah, and then it also, I'd, I'd say that you're like, oh, that's an IT issue. I'll have my IT team on it. No, that's a <laughs> yeah. marketing issue. That's Those are yeah. marketing things you need to learn. Yeah. So. Uh, we can continue on. If, if we're yeah. Not, uh, yeah. Um, so uh, a quick... Um, uh, a quick aside on prompts. Um, so this is the difference between uh, a, when you've, you've ever listened to interviews and people say, oh, that's a good question versus like, do you have any questions? Um, and uh, the sort of folk, uh, the, the question on the right, like, like, you know, write an icebreaker, or like fix all my sales problems for me. These are the kinds of questions that you see and they're not really helpful. Um, these are the types of questions in this presentation. I'm selling a service, so we're gonna talk about Bonfire Women, which well, is a company that I work with. Go ahead. Let's, just for a second, let's talk about yeah. why those aren't helpful. And I think, um, at least for me, if I understand the why, then I, I, can, I can focus on the rest. Yeah. And I think that it, it's like, right, how many people um, are going to write things like write an, an icebreaker line to a prospect, given the information, like they're going to write that basic stuff. That's going to be a common prompt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, so what's, what's going to happen? Well, you're using the same database, right? It's going to like, you know, GPT is going to go out and they're going to ask that it's going to tap the same information and it's going to come back to a similar variant of the same email. Right. A little bit different. Cool. So the more specific you can go ahead and get into that prompt and telling it what you need, the more context you can give it, the better. Yeah. And I'll say that that's right. And I'll say one other piece about that is that this um, this sort of right an icebreaker line, this is attention. And the problem we have is not attention. I mean, it's one of the problems, but it's not the key problem. And so people think I can use AI to get attention and then I can puke about what I do and my business. So I can, once I get over this thing of talking about them and who they are, I can finally tell them everything about me. Um, it's just a bad way to think about cold outbound because no one cares about you. They don't care about your product. No one wakes up and they thought, damn, if I only had a SaaS solution to help me with my cold emails, I'd be great. No, they're like, my emails aren't getting in inboxes. They're thinking about their problems. Um, and so uh, so really, these are unfocused. Uh, there's no context. And even if there is context, it's like too creative. Um, it's it's not coming in with an opinion on mind. Um, whereas like on the left, it's like, I'm selling a service to help women get promoted. Um, all the text on the homepage is below. So I paste it in the context. I'm looking to figure out which titles will be the best to target at my ICP, the exact moment or inflection point, um, and where they would need me most, and then give me 10 complex ideas that solve for timing and when to reach out, this is the creative constraint, um, and which customers I should target, and why you think this moment and title is a perfect person to reach out to. Here's our website. Um, so we're gonna like dive into that. So great, now we've moved on to how to go from a total addressable market to a service addressable market. And um, so we talked about Bonfire Women, they uh, help women get promoted. Um, so they make sure that uh, women and men are being promoted equally in organizations and they have um, a tool strategies and trainings to help make that happen. So, uh, so I've, I've been working with them for a long time and now I said, what if I had AI replace me? Um, how good would AI do uh, minus Jordan? 
So I ask you to give me some ideas. If I had to score a company from one to 10 to determine a company to be a perfect fit for Bonfire Service, what are the top 10 data points I would use to define a perfect fit? So like gender diversity ratio, a lower ratio of women to men in leadership positions. But you're like, but Jordan, Zoom Info doesn't have that. We're gonna get to that. Um, employee turnover rate, especially for women. Company size, industry, so, you know, company culture, you'd expect these things. Look at number seven, we actually ran this play. Presence of employee research groups. Um, employee resource groups. Um, so in job descriptions, we've actually pulled this data and it says women at, so women at Twilio, women at eBay. So they have an ERG specifically for that group of people. And we did run this play. Um, recent negative press for gender bias, like uh, restructuring rapid growth, like uh, organizations with female CEOs, founders, we actually did do this too. Um, so great ideas about go to market that, um, that you didn't have to pay me all this money to figure out because GPT-4 could do it for you. Um, and GPT-4 can tell you great data sources to find. And so we actually used one of these data sources. So it's like, give me three data providers that are cheap, undiscovered, and that be willing and excited to work with us and negotiate on price because I'm always thinking about price. How can I get my, I want high quality, low price. Um, provide their names, domains, and why you think they're a great fit for Bonfire. So we actually used a, a, a service similar to Gender API to uh, take someone's name and uh, identify if they were, um, which gender they were. Um, we've even looked at pronouns inside of LinkedIn profiles to actually say, if you raise your hand and say she, her, um, we have a better confidence that, um, that you might be struggling with these issues. Um, uh, some of this stuff wasn't as good. We didn't, um, we didn't use it. Um, but this is like People Data Labs is totally a source that I would use um, to do this. So it's going to give you great ideas. Um, so I want to talk, I want to like give a pause for a minute to um, a lot of people ask questions and um, sort of ask, how are you guys deploying your data today? Are you buying Zoom Info and hoping that's good enough? Um, how are you thinking about richer data sources um, and taking that data and bringing it to your sales team? One thing I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll post on here because I think this is, this is where we're going. And I'm not even going to try to say her name again because she roasted me last time. But... <laughs> That uh, AI will help us will help sales focus on the problems in, in targeted accounts. I think this is what you're getting to with, with all of this right here, with the, with the example that you're giving. That great. Let's 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 look at this. Um, honestly, what I've seen is I talk to people about how they're deploying data, and you know that's part of what Signals does is look for the that data, yeah. those signals that are coming in on on the website. But um, what you're also describing is, is is how to use all this other data. How you have all these data sources. Could be Apollo, could be uh, Similar Web or SEM Rush, or could be yep. uh, Zoom Info or LinkedIn. And the problem that we have right now that I see, and tell me if I'm wrong, is that all those data sources tend to act in a silo. Yes, they're all individual. And yes. so cross-referencing those things, we talked it about the other night. Cross-referencing those things is such a time suck and totally. such a um, an effort like drain. Um, that that you don't really leverage the real power of hey the G two data plus LinkedIn data plus Apollo data plus whatever else you can throw yeah. in there yeah and this is exactly right um, and you really have to think about this as the best data sources are usually layered data sources so combining three or four different variables. Um, and so, and, and once you do that, the thing is that the revenue team and the SDR, they're usually worlds apart. The revenue team buys all this software, they throw it in Salesforce, and they're like, good luck. Uh, <laughs> and the SDR is like, well, how do, where do I start? It's like, well, we, we gave you 4,568 data points on every company. Like, what else do you just, want? Yeah, what else do you want? I mean, do you want 5,000 data points? It's like, it's like not actually helpful to, because you need to ship that to the market. And so you give um, this, you know, entry level person um, just a massive amounts of data. And, and even me as a founder, like I, I, I wouldn't, I mean, I've got access to a ton, Eric and I have access to tons of data. Do, like how often do we like manually look at it? Like never. Uh, we deploy it at scale, uh, which we will talk about. I joke with Jordan that sometimes, I, like, uh, when we talk with SDR teams and, like, actually sometimes they have a lack of data as well. I, like, I'll joke with Jordan and be like, uh, you know, we have so much data that I forget about data that is, like, the same size as SDRs have access to. That I'm like, oh, yeah. wait, we do have that database. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, okay, so we've gone over the setup stuff. Um, now let's talk about campaigns. I think this is where the juice is. So thanks for sticking with us so far because I think this is where you're going to get a lot of value. Because um, now we're talking about actions, right? Like, okay, ideas are great, but Jordan, how do I take this action? Um, so 
Uh, we're talking about going from the TAM to the SAM and how to score individual accounts. So we want to know, is an account a, uh, an A+, plus, uh, an F, and what do we do accordingly? So on the right here is just a screenshot from, uh, from clay.com. It's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, it is the F14, uh, the F16 of, uh, of sales tools. And so if you get in there, you're going to be like, what the hell is going on? Um, uh, but it is very, very powerful. And so one of the things that you can do here is on a row by row level, have a conversation with ChatGPT. And I'm gonna show you that a little bit later, but this is just an example. This is a company description, company description. And here's a recent job, job. Now, given my company description, rank how good this company is a fit for my service one to 10. So really, really simple, right? Not to, but it's taken a lot of context. Um, so, uh, let's actually, um, let's talk about creative constraint with context, which I'm going to talk a little bit later, but let's talk about account scoring at scale. So this is an example, um, the scale piece is above, but um, this is actually an example of that output, right? Here's a job description from Unilever. Um, uh, it also has their company careers page. Tell me on a scale of one to 10, how good of a culture fit this company is for Bonfire and explain your reasons and why you gave it that score. So this is not hallucinating because I gave it context and I did ask it to be creative, right? Because I gave it to, but I asked to be constrained. I didn't say write an email. And so it's like, oh, they're committed to gender balance, like a 54, 46 gender balance, male or female. That's like actually from their job descriptions. Um, they have a presence in a bunch of countries. They like emphasize the importance of employees. Uh, internship opportunities, like the job description of the HR people demonstrates you know their values, employee well-being, development, and engagement. So it's like 8.5 out of 10. Pretty incredible. Um, uh, so I'm just going to give you a chance to scan this, and we're going to we're going to keep plowing through because we've got some more stuff to talk talk about. Um, and then I want to actually, Eric, I'm going to hand this uh, this piece on targeting over to you um, uh, uh, to, to to talk about. Yeah, and so when it when it comes, jeez. Uh, I have so much to say about this. When it comes to targeting, so often companies will come to us and they'll say, you know, every company in my market, the, the people who are in my service addressable market are chief marketing officers who have 50 to 150 employees. Go. And it's like, well, no, that's, that's, that, that's not true, uh, you know, in the slightest bit. And the reason it's not true in the slightest bit is because when you say something to everyone, you're basically saying, something to no one because it just mm -hmm. doesn't fit all of these people. And so when Jordan and I build these target lists, whether we're using AI to build them or not, we're building the the targeting in a way that becomes the message. And so, you know, what uh, if this one right here, even, you know, congrats on your promotion at Camp Arcadia. Uh, you know, now that you've had time to settle into your role, I was wondering if you think there are enough development opportunities to support women as they advance in their careers. At Bonfire, we understand that promoting gender diversity is crucial for organizational success, right? All these things where, like, people are, like, so – they're like, what do I say in the email? But in this situation, this is – okay, we're reaching out to somebody who got a promotion at a company, and the next thing that we're talking about is giving context of how that promotion might infer, you know – problems that they're having in that company then just a quick little pitch and then a quick light CTA. And so instead of just attention hacking and then puking about what your company is, mm -hmm. now you're like, okay, well, I'm reaching out to these people specifically because they fit the ICP of the companies generally, but this person, they might be seeing this problem differently because they recently got a promotion. And then that becomes the, the messaging that you put into these things. Yeah. And so and, and a lot of these things can be done without artificial intelligence. Like, I know we're, we're yeah. here to talk about artificial intelligence, but the amount of campaigns that we run that have this level of sophistication to them that don't use artificial intelligence is still pretty high. Like I would say even yeah. still, it's probably like 75% of the campaigns that we run are really just using more interesting uh, SQL queries of big data sets and not necessarily yeah. like using AI every single time to, to do these things. But where AI could also get you is if you have a more difficult trigger to figure out where you have to look at somebody's job description and say, okay, you know, do they mention diversity, equity, and inclusion, and are they doing anything about it? Because they might say D, E, and I in the job description, but what are they doing about it? Yeah. That, to scale that, would be incredibly difficult without artificial intelligence, and that's a perfect time to, to bring in these kinds of things. Yeah. And, in, the key, in, in the keynote today, I, I forget who it was, uh, but they were talking about one of the issues with AI and GPT in general is that you know, they mentioned um, uh, how, that it's a bit of a black box, right? That you don't know why. Yep, yep. Well, I love that you just added this simple prompt and tell me why. 
And it's like, yeah. it's one of those dumb moments where if you've played with it, you're like, oh, let's just ask. I'm asking yeah. everything else. You know, I asked you to make this cookie recipe uh, gluten free and it did it. So why can't I just ask it why it chose to do what it did? Um, and, and so make sure you include stuff like that. So you, if you need to understand why. Yeah, it, it's funny. It's the old Reagan quote, right? Trust, but verify. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, and it, you know, sometimes you have to be really careful here. This is why we talk a lot about first principles. It's like um, AI is a very convincing, it's a bullshit artist. Uh, and it's a very convincing bullshit artist. I mean, maybe your kids are the only better uh, convincing bullshit <laughs> artist. Um, but uh, but it's really good. It's because so, my daughter came down and told me she loved me before she went to bed. <laughs> oh, come yeah, on. Geez, oh, man. no. <laughs> well, she's a teenager. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think that it's also when it comes to the, the bullshit. Oh, great. Actually, Jordan, jump into this. This is what I was... Just <laughs> great. Bring up yeah. Yours. So yeah. So this is exactly to uh, Steve's point here. It's like, um, so I'm going to give you an example of uh, a, a prompt with context, but no creative constraint. Great. So they know they know Bonfire and they know Unilever, and it's like write a message. And uh, Steve would fire me today if I was his SDR and I sent this message. It's like, would you like to read 78 paragraphs about my service? Um, like, no, that's insane, right? Um, now, if you give it context, so they've got the job description of Unilever, Unilever they've got the uh, company information, uh, they know bonfires, uh, just the plain text on the website, and there's creative constraint. Summarize the top three reasons why Unilever might desperately need bonfire. Keep them super short, only three po points. Focus on something a head of talent would care about. Make sure you talk about their business, their needs, why this might matter to them based on their mission values, and end with a question asking if your assumptions based on your research seem right. And the reason you can't ask it to write a sales email is because it's been trained on all the SEO content that people pushed out there to write SE to write cold emails that everyone used that have now become totally worthless. And so you can see we, this isn't. We joked about that for like thirty minutes the other night. Some of the, the crap emails that we've 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 seen. So bad. Um, and and I think that you know the, the thing with, with chat gpt we need to remember is is garbage in garbage out right yep and yep. so if it's reading all this garbage emails that were out there that's what it's going to spit back out so you've got to yes. be careful with it and i love the idea of putting these constraints up there yeah and um so this is not exactly something i would send it's going to get smaller but um but at least it's talking about unilever and it's like here's why i believe you like you care about retention and traction and sustainable impact right i'm not going to send this in an email yet but you can kind of see if there's context and creative constraint you can get somewhere all right uh, I'm actually going to get into actual campaigns that we've run here, so you can see like uh, that I'm not just um, you know um, on here for the lulls. Um, so I can give you targeting ideas too. Um, and so this is like an example of a uh, a question I ask uh, for Bonfire. It's like, okay, so what are the key moments for me to reach out? Newly appointed female executives, like low gender diversity. We talked about some of the negative press, right? A high empl employee turnover, right? We talked about some of these ideas. Um, and so let's actually talk about an example. So um, I'm going to give a subtle plug for um, uh, for Blueprint here because we used AI recently to promote my service. So uh, we're monitoring, um, uh, we've got over 4 million jobs that we have scraped and put into a database. It's and so can, cool. Yes, yeah, really. Well, I, I got to show you that. I, it's Even since I've been at your house, we've had, a, um, uh, we've had an advancement that I got to show you um, because... Yeah. Now uh, we're using this thing called an, um, an embeddings model. So you just can write a natural language sentence. When VPs of sales are having problems identifying their ICP and figuring out uh, who they should sell to and determining when to act, signals can um, uh, help them act at the right time, define the message, and, um, uh, and convert more deals, right? So you can write a sentence like that in this natural language search, and we'll say, we looked at four million jobs. Here are the job descriptions that talk the most about these problems. So you will basically, uh, in my service, you'll have a Google search-like experience or a ChatGPT-like search experience um, uh, on job descriptions because jobs talk about jobs to be done. What are the problems? So um, what I did is um, I chatted with AI at scale in uh, clay.com to give it creative constraint with context. And what I'm looking for here is I want to be able to send a personalized email uh, that actually tells what is the search that you should run inside of my tool. So what is the search for the titles, the problem, and I want to do this at scale, right? I don't, I don't have any SDRs on my team. I need to do this at scale. So 
I give it context. You're the VP of sales at this company. Your website is this domain. You're in this industry. You're an absolute expert in markets. You understand the customer better than anyone else at the company. You're deeply familiar with your jobs to be done framework as outlined by Clayton Christensen. Great. This is a description of a B2B SaaS company you work for. Tell me what top three job titles you might find indications of the pain that companies might be facing before implementing the products or solutions. Great. Now that you know the titles, I'm having, this is just on a single row of data, a single company. You can do this inside of Clay. Now that you know the titles, I want you to pretend to be their ideal prospects. You should impersonate each of those job roles above and be the world's greatest expert. Now this is the sort of really where everything comes together. Focus on the keywords you have found in the past that might exist in each of these job descriptions. Now assume that you have access to the world's smartest search engine. That's a little, I, I, I got a little fancy there. I said I have the world's smartest search engine that only searches jobs. It works in natural language and only it needs several perfectly articulate sentences to find the jobs that are perfect. Now write up three distinct queries, one for each job title you identified that would serve as the top fit job. So, so this is what it did for Kentic. So um, uh, my friend David is the CMO there. Um, it's a network observability platform. It like network engineers. So this is a message I sent. Google your TAM. David, what if you could run these Googles? I, I sent him a cold email. I told him I would send him a cold email. We like have coffee all the time. I'm like, only reply if you think it's good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he replied actually. Um, network operations center manager. Show me job descriptions for network operations that mention challenges in network performance monitoring, maintaining network health, improving visibility across cloud and on-premise infrastructure, ensuring fast troubleshooting networks. Wow. Like super, super, super relevant, right? Creative. It had context um, and it was constrained, right? Um, here's an example for Front, right? They built, build, um, they're a unified inbox. Find customer success manager job descriptions. Search for operation manager that like high, managing information, distributing across teams, like really, really, really creative. Lots of constraint and context. So you can see now, I'm not sending, uh, hey, Steve, you got the greatest beard in the world. Like, uh, do you want to buy my SaaS solution? No, like, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what he cares about, what he's targeting. Um, another example for Ricardo, we'll, um, we'll skip it in the interest of time. Um, uh, but I do want to uh, give sort of a pause here before we go on to some more examples. Um, and we're doing great on time, um, as my calendar's reminded me. Um, so, what context do you need to be creative? I'd love to hear from the audience. I guess, so that's 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 the hard part, and that's the key is yeah. is narrowing down uh, your your the context. But the, I mean, clearly you can see the 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 closer you get to the context, the better the results. Just yep. like we said, garbage in, garbage out. Um, yeah, and I'm just watching here to see if we've got any comments coming in here. Uh, not well, let's see here. We can pop over to more examples if we don't have any. Yep. Um, Let's go ahead and, and okay, throw great. out the. Um, uh, uh, Eric, you want to uh, take this one? Yeah. And so, uh, so Jordan and I actually sometimes have like a, a disagreement on uh, <laughs> like things. Uh, why things you got to air? Why you got to air our dirty laundry, Eric? <laughs> I, I don't know. But so, so like um, those the attention hacks. That's that, how stuff that, goes viral. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, thing. Okay, great. And so uh, I think that sometimes these attention hacks that we were talking about um, do increase your overall reply rate, but they have to be used in ways that, um, one, are definitely not detracting from the message, and two, just kind of help things uh, move along. And so I, in this message, I said, you know, I was on your LinkedIn company page, and it looks like you help uh, employees develop mentally and professionally, which we were basically analyzing their website and just picking up, you know, what what they do when we targeted these companies when we just said hey uh you know it, when we took out that first line and said not sure if you've seen all the chatter about chat chat gpt but i was curious if you had a plan to leverage it in your business we actually saw a 4x increase in responses when we said i was on your linkedin company page and it looks like you help employees blah 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 and whatever their well, it's context is. eric eric you are providing content like most people think about these first lines as like Hey, do you know Jordan rhymes with Gordon? Hey, what a great name! Uh, but this is actually Did you, you about, went like, to the I University of Utah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, so, is... <laughs> yeah, and so the and so using AI to just basically put something in front of somebody where they're like, well, yeah, like thanks, but me going to the University of Utah has nothing to do with with any of this. Problem, um, those yeah. are the kind of attention Excellent. hacky things. Yeah, those are the attention hacky things that like Jordan and I both agree on. Like you just shouldn't do. Like you shouldn't touch that at all. Um, but in here we're, you know, using it and we're like, oh, like I took a look at your website and I, on the spectrum of personalization versus relevance, like this is very much just like, this just checks the box of just saying like, okay, 
I, did they I'm manually person, research me up, yeah. or not? Yeah. yeah, I'm a person. This actually got sent to me, um, which is not the highest level of using artificial intelligence, but definitely, uh, you know, one to, to definitely be leveraged. And so, uh, yeah, that, that is basically what I would say about this one is, is you could, if you don't have phenomenal opinions about what you should be saying to people based on the context, because the context might be too varied. Like why should these people, I'm reaching out to CEOs across like, I don't know, it was like 25 different industries. Like what AI would I like put on them to like basically have a message that I could say to everybody? It'd be tough, but like the offer is pretty good. We have a lot of social proof. Let's just summarize their, what their company does. They feel like we actually reached out to them. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and then uh, I did something really dumb with AI, so I thought I would share that it's not all roses. Um, so I did. I was looking at a conference, and uh, I pulled all the people used Apollo to pull the people like 300 miles away from the conference. And then I used GPT 3.5, and I say, "Tell me the driving distance from this person's city to the conference city." And it's like, looks like Rancho Palos Verdes is a six and a half hour drive for you. I am the only person that will make a six and a half hour drive in a day. And so like, uh, and the AI, uh, the sort of non AI uh, campaign um, uh, certainly performed a little bit better here. Um, And I think this is like a good example of something really small that AI can do that uh, it can just naturalize the language. So it can take three or four steps and say, well, look at the distances between these two things and then convert it in such a way that you would a human would write it, which is like a really good use for AI. Um, uh, so this is, this is all we have for you. Um, uh, you can access this presentation if you just put your camera here or type in that URL. And then the whole ChatGPT conversation I have is, uh, is on the right. So we got uh, the last six minutes um, to um, answer questions. Yeah, it was the, the, the big first question was you know, someone, hey, is this going to be available online? So there's so much here. This is so dense. There's like and dense in a good way, not like dense the way I got called in high school. Um, <laughs> it, it's dense, dense in that like there. I mean, I'm sitting there going, okay, I'm going to have to rewatch this, even though I've I've worked on this before. We've had a conversation at the dinner table, um, and I'm sitting there going, okay, so and so needs to see this, and so and so needs to see this, etc. So, yeah, if you've got questions, let us know. Um, we want to go ahead and, and, and answer them. Um, and you've got access to some really great uh, AI folks on here right now. Let me ask there you, you this minutes. question. To start out with, yeah, um, I think that <laughs> the, the big question that I've got right now is is where I mean, this is a lot of great stuff. You know, we talked about clay, we talked about blueprint. Um, is going on right now to Chat GPT? Is that a great place to start and get uh, uh, used to it? I mean, what other where else should they be going to kind of start getting their hands dirty? I know. I used Clay the other day, um, and uh, you know they give crazy. you fifteen hundred credits, which I was like, "This is great! This will last me forever." <laughs> and like, I, I I used it, and I got a little overly aggressive, and uh, wouldn't you know it, um, I quickly ran out of fifteen hundred credits in about ten minutes. So, yeah. what's where do we roll up our sleeves and where do we get into it? Well, I think, um, and Eric, I'm curious to get your thoughts here. My thought is just, if you can do something manually for, like the way that I tell all my clients, you write the perfect email. Assume you have unlimited amounts of time to spend. So just don't worry about research, just write the very, very perfect email and then back into ways to automate that, to scale that. And you can start just inside of ChatGPT, paste in the context. All I did is I copied a company's website. Like everything that I did, I didn't use any technology besides ChatGPT to like do everything that you saw there. So you can do all that today. Now you gotta set up the systems, et cetera, to, to be able to scale it. But if you can get it to work at a small scale, it's not really all that hard without any code. I am not an I, I'm, I do not code, um, and you can easily do this inside of Clay. Eric, yeah, anything? I, yeah. I think. Um, uh, what was I going to say? I think one. All of this is really just a knowledge gap. Like whenever I was just at a sales agency summit um, this past weekend, and people were like, "Oh, AI is going to like replace these uh, everyone's jobs." Like, well, like people just aren't asking the right questions and they're not getting good enough yeah. ideas um, from it. So yeah. like the, the people who are like, oh, let's just target every chief marketing officer with 100 to 150 employees, they, they also don't have the frame to, to think about anything new as well. And so um, one, I would say the biggest thing is like, it's still so nascent that if you were to watch Jordan's um, YouTube channel or my YouTube channel, you'd be like caught up with us because like there, there's not a whole lot on there that we haven't posted about. 
And yeah. um, really, in order to get into it, like you really, like, what Jordan said, like you need to come to it with a blank slate and say, like, all right, if I can do anything, like let's think about this, because um, you know, I for a long time I was very against having GPT four write a full email for outreach because I was just like, ah, it's like you're not going to be able to give it enough context. It's never going to work. And then there was somebody who did it kind of. And I was like, oh, shoot, I have to figure this out because th somebody's doing it and I have to get ahead of them. And um, it actually was <laughs> totally possible. And it was just my um, constraints on my beliefs about what GPT-4 could do that was actually holding me back yeah. and not like actually GPT-4 from, from doing it. Yeah. Okay. Two, two yeah. questions here we've got. Uh, one is any plugins for Jet chat GPT that you guys like? Well, I just use the Google. There's a um, GPT for work.com, I think is the website. And it's not a plugin, but you can just bring GPT into Google Sheets. And you can do like equals GPT3 and then like ask a question from the row. So you don't even need clay to this. It's like with, with an open uh, AI API key, which anyone can get, you can just paste that in and it's, it's great. Um, the plugins which have just been released, I think... Um, uh, you know, I know that there's like like Bard now has access to the internet, and you can like chat with Google's bot. Um, the plugins were like just released, I think, on Monday um, to most yeah. people that were paying for Plus. I haven't used a lot of them, um, but I think honestly they're not tied into our workflows, so it's actually hard to use the plugin and then like take that and do something else more interesting with it. Um, I I have played around with like summarize this Google Doc, so you have some more flexibility here, but. I think that um, the way that I would probably use this is actually go and like take this technical documentation and explain it to me or summarize this um, and have it talk to the internet a little bit better um, to understand kind of the context of what's going on the internet now. Um, that's probably how I would use plugins, um, not necessarily in my workflow. Um, okay. Just very quickly, uh, you know, plugins, you have to be there using ChatGPT and Jordan and I use the API so it'll scale with the system. I took a look at the list. The only thing that looked interesting today was Zapier. I, everything else kind of just looks like marginally interesting. Um, and then Jeremy Ross. Hey, Jeremy. I, I think Jordan and I both know Jeremy. Um, what's the yeah. best way to automate relevant research collection from the web? I'm thinking blogs, news, et cetera, not including LinkedIn. Um, there's Clay. data sources that will get you this, that we bring them in through with Clay. So like Predict Leads has like blogs and news and things like that. But I think if, if you know exactly what you're going for, um, just using Google search operators is a, a way that I would handle this, where it's like, if you want to know their, their blogs page, or you want to know that they mentioned a keyword on their site, or you want to know any of those yeah. things, we'll see what it looks like when ChatGPT's API has access to the internet, which I don't think it does yet. Um, but mm -hmm. Actually, I'm very sure mm -hmm. that it doesn't. Um, and so when they have access to the internet, we'll see how that changes. Um, and that will be a radical change. but. You know, at this point, I think Google search operators and like something like predict leads will get you all the way. Okay. Yeah, and you well, can I... just Google. Go ahead. Sorry, last thing, you just you can just Google um, uh, forty two advanced Google search operators and start playing with that immediately. Eric's absolutely right. Google's built a billion dollar scraper for you. Uh, leverage it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, great. I appreciate it. Uh, if uh, you guys are both on 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 LinkedIn and and very active on LinkedIn, as I found out, um, we're also on LinkedIn. <laughs>